Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Today, we're joined by Dr. Dina Jones. <laughs> and uh, Dina, can you tell us a little bit about your role as um, Acting Center Director? Okay, thank you, Kelly. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening. Whenever I guess someone's listening to this, it's morning here. Um, I am the Acting Center Director of the U.S. National Poultry Research Center, which is um, one of the primary poultry research locations for the USDA Agricultural Research Service. We're located here in Athens, Georgia. Um, here in our center, we have six research units that work on everything from poultry food safety and poultry and egg food safety and product quality, feed safety, and then also we conduct all the um, agency's research on exotic, emerging, and endemic poultry viral diseases here at the center. So we are a wide um, breadth of topics that we cover here, but we are an epicenter for our agency and focused um, on the poultry and egg research. And we've also, as, as time has moved on, particular to um, this podcast, we have expanded into feed safety and our mycotoxin and toxicology research unit has shifted gears to focus primarily on poultry um, feed and the safety of that. Wow. Um, that's, that's quite a lot. <laughs> it is. It's a very dynamic location. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that you did a lot. I've known you for a while, but um, that, that I didn't realize, and especially within this new role, everything that falls underneath your umbrella. So, um, you know, and so it absolutely, you know, ties into nutrition, but also so many other different things um, that are you know, very important to getting product out to the consumer. Um, but there's so many different steps. And a lot of times, I, and I always take time to mention, I always, everyone knows about or has heard about the research that comes out of the location and the research units, the six research units that we have here. But what they lose sight of often is the four management units that we have here, because we do have um, a need for a diverse group of individuals to help in our center and to help us do all this research. And it's not just the PhDs or the DBMs that are here to do the research and the scientists that you see out speaking and everything. Our four management units are administration and financial management. We have a whole group that deals with operations and facilities, another group that deals purely with food, with our safety and biosafety um, for our facility, and then we have veterinary services. So within that, we have a lot of other, especially if I'm, I'm always I'm always beating the drum for those of you who may be from an academic setting or even those of you who are in industry and thinking about you might need to do a, thinking of a little different path. We have got a spot for you. I want everyone to know that <laughs> there is a role that you can help with the U.S. National Poultry Research Center and also the other research, um, big research centers within the ARS across the country. Yeah, that's great. OK, so um, how long have you been in this role? Well, I have been acting for the better part of this last year. Um, we are in the final stages of shifting to a permanent um, center director position, and that should be announced um, within the coming months on that final decision. But previous to that, I spent have spent 23 years as a research scientist here at our location. Yeah, and so that's how when I first met you, we were involved in um, a multi-state group, and um, I remember coming into the room and then um, seeing you and knitting furiously. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the woman who's knitting. That's how everyone knows to begin with in the meeting. If you walked into a poultry meeting and seen that woman who's knitting. Yeah, exactly. And so, and the funny thing is too, I mean, you know, to be quite honest, I thought, oh, well, she, she's not, is she paying attention? You know, and then, no, you're with it. You, I mean, you knew, you know exactly what's going on. You just are, I mean, you were, you were doing fidget, fidget spinners before they were, you know, a thing. <laughs> just the knitting. And you know, everyone says that, like when people first meet me, they're kind of like, Oh, I saw you in the back of the room in a meeting. I thought you were the rudest person ever sitting back there, blatantly not paying attention. And then they immediately go, but I figured out about 10 minutes into it that you are more on top of things than what everybody else was doing. Like you were more engaged. Yeah. It's funny. Oh, it's so there's funny. Some, there's some groups in the egg world that apparently there's a knitting index 
And it because they watched me, it has to do with how I'm handling and what I'm doing with my knitting about what's happening in the meeting. <laughs> I'm like, ah, so that's funny. funny. <laughs> really, we're not paying attention. If y'all have been for years figuring out this quote unquote knitting index, for this <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> um, so I guess with. In your role as a researcher and all the different things in the, um, so I guess, do you mind to explain like what a multi-state group is, um, just for people, those that may not have any knowledge? Thank you for not saying as someone who's been around for a really long time and has a great history that you could provide this. I, I appreciate you not saying that as your, but I know that that's where we were heading. Um, no, the multi, the multi-state projects. And originally I will, when, Even when I came on board, it wasn't truly multi-state. It was more of a national approach, Um, even though we still call it that, it's still national. It is really important because it allows for the, um, a group of individuals with us as a very, in the project that we're working on now is a very dynamic project that has lots of different parts. There's a nutrition part, there's a food safety part, there's a production part, there's an engineering part. There's like, which is great because as we're looking at these poultry related um, problems that we're trying to work on, nothing is a stagnant problem. Everything we're dealing with is a very dynamic um, issue that we need to look at. So as we work at and forge these teams across the country, because originally when we started off and they were regional projects, it was, it was because some of the universities dropped some of their expertise. Used to almost every land grant university had every expertise of poultry science you needed within the, within the university. And then they're like, well, we have to go to a more regional approach because we don't have all this expertise. Well, now we literally need to be national because we don't have all these expertise evenly spaced throughout Um, the country or within a region or whatever. So we need to work together. And a lot of times I always come up, number one, it's fun because we are a very unique, eclectic group of people. And so you can't not laugh your way through a meeting because there's so many personalities. That's number one. And you're always going to have great people to go out to eat meals with. That's always number two. That's important. And then number three is everyone has their unique perspective to pull in. And as I were, as I um, refer to, especially in my world, I deal with, eggs and laying hen flocks. Dealing with laying hen flocks is completely different financially than dealing with meat birds because meat birds are going to be in and out in a short period of time. We are committed to a year and a half to two years of meat birds to a research study. And that is a lot of flipping money. It's a lot of money. Absolutely. So as such, we need to get as much, as I say, as much goodie as we can can out of those birds. And so by taking these national approaches with people, and then we all kind of cross train, we work together, we figure out how to cross train and people, people on my team know how to do certain environmental assessments and set up equipment so we can get the data and then send it off to a collaborator for them to do or People in the field have been trained how to aseptically take a whole lot of egg and environmental samples for us to ship samples back to us across the country so that when we are putting these physical resources into maintaining this flock of birds, we are getting the absolute most information we can out to publish for our stakeholders, whether it be industry, whether it be academics, whether it be regulatory. So we're trying our best to do that. And the regional research projects, or which are now national projects, allow us to do that so much better. Um, and as we've moved on to like we have here where we can video conference as a whole, I like it a whole lot better now that we can see each other on the screen than when we used to have the calls and squawk box. You know what I mean? Where we have the conference calls. This is like so much better. Absolutely. And then when we all circle together, usually twice a year, um, when we circle together at the, at the scientific meetings or the big national meetings where we're all at, we can at least get part of us back together. We have that literal FaceTime. Um, But it's really changed things. I came through that way. I came through as a collaborative researcher. Um, And I think, Kelly, you have too, because you've come through a a generation when you were coming through um, academics. You you needed to collaborate because, again, you came out of a a university that didn't have poultry science departments. So you needed to forge forge bands, you know, to to find that expertise. Um, So it was really, it's important. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. 
Well, that concludes our episode of Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Thanks, Dina, for joining us again today. And uh, this will be the end of our first part. We're going to be continuing the conversation next week in a second part, but just because uh, just good conversations like to roll on, right? Um, so thanks again to our listeners. I'm Kelly Walmsley, and we'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research, Research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.